All righty, Shibalon, Mr. Picard, more Mori, and Yahoo, and Yashriel. I want to welcome you to a, another streaming broadcast of My Living Branch. So, what, we, what we're going to do, we're going to pray. Then there are some uh, things I'm going to go over, just briefly. So that we can make some adjustments. Because we have some adjustments. Uh, we want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So we say shalom to everyone out there. And we appreciate all your support, all your prayers. Hallelujah. So let's pray first. We'll get that out the way. Um, and then we'll go into our lesson called Seasonal Allergies, Thorns, and Thistles. Should be an interesting lesson and bring understanding to a lot of us. Okay. Baruch Hashem Yehuah Malak HaAlam. Father, we say Toda Rebah. We bless you. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your knowledge, your understanding. Thank you, Father, for all that you give us. We pray that you give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, memory, recall. Help us to be set apart in every area of life. Thank you, Father, for letting us have this opportunity to have your truth. There are so many people, Father, that have heard this truth, but walk over it, reject it, turn aside. But we're thankful, Father, that we did not let our hearts be darkened. But we turned a listening ear to hear what you had to say to us. Now, Father, I pray that you speak to our hearts today. That we will walk in the wisdom of Elohim. That we will grow in favor with man and with Elohim. Thank you, Father. For all you do in the name of Mashiach Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. Alrighty, so <clears throat> one of the things that we're going to adjust is Shabbat service time. Now, I know a lot of you haven't studied the might not have studied the calendar or understand the calendar. Um and I've had people email me. Um you know, with questions and uh, various, you know, just various type, you know, just seeking understanding. So as a part of the clarity, we're going to move our Shabbat service to the Shabbat service that's on the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's in the Dead Sea Scrolls and in the calendar. Now, of course, that's in the U.S. Um, so... We're going to move it to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Gregorian Sunday. Now, make sure, and I am going to come out with to do and do short lessons on the calendar to help bring you up to speed. They'll be simple, short lessons, and they will be exclusive to the website. So, <clears throat> they won't be on YouTube, and they'll, they won't be accessible on YouTube, but if you go to, if you're part of the website, um, mylivingbranch.org, you will be able to access it and watch, and the reason I'm doing it like that is because when you know some people ha have the belief you know you just throw the knowledge out to everybody and whoever gets it gets it well i believe just like mashiach showed us there were there were people that were sent to him that weren't just you know here for a moment then gone later so i want to 
pass on the understanding to those that are trying to endure, those that are really seeking his heart. Because the reason people have a lot of debate and problems is because they they're intertwining their own belief systems into the into the calendar and they're basing everything off the Gregorian well he didn't great Pope Gregory didn't exist when the father created his calendar so we can't use Pope Gregory as a, a plateau to try to understand calendars and quote unquote our modern day calendar so I'll be doing short lessons now just for those uh, I did post a copy of the calendar on the website under files for those of you that are not in the US time zones but your time zone is closer to Jerusalem more than likely your Shabbat will be sunset Sunday to sunset Monday so you know you make those adjustments but our service here will be 1030 on the Gregorian Sunday okay now if you ask me questions on the calendar the first thing I'm gonna ask you is what have you studied because we did uh, over two years ago because we started this journey about six five to six years ago uh, myself Maury Lamont and those that agreed to embark on the journey to understand calendars and to you know try to figure out the father's calendar so there was a study that went forth it's on the path to Yahuwah their YouTube channel and it's entitled studying the calendar so I'm gonna ask you have you watched that series <clears throat> because that lays a lot of groundwork that gives you an understanding so make sure you know if you haven't taken the time take the time and watch that series and then like I said in the coming weeks I'll be putting out short mini lessons on the calendar to bring understanding because what we have to understand is there are several calendars that work at the same time and if you don't understand that then when you trying to piece everything together and try to figure out well what do I operate do I operate by the Sun is it the, the moon the stars what is it you got to understand how they all work together and what they are in charge of and once you get that it'll help you tremendously and knowing that there are several things working at the same time. All right, so but you can still if you got questions, you still can send them to me. But just be aware, I'm going to ask you: Have you watched this series? What is your study been? All righty, so let's see. Now, this is for, I put this in here because I'm getting people that ask for an invitation to the website, but then their invitations are sitting in my invitation box because I'll send them the invitation and they haven't, you know, accepted the invitation. Now, what's happening after seven days? If you haven't accepted the invitation and joined the website, I delete your request because I can't have my invitation box overflowing. Um, you know that way it's it's easier to manage. So, if you requested an invitation to join Living Branch, you're gonna get this email, my Living Branch. You have to click on the link that's sent to you. And once you click on the link, it's going to bring you to this page. Sign up. You put your account name, your email, your password. Then when you click submit, it's going to take you and 
create your profile. Okay, and I will know that you've done that because I can see it in my back office uh, system. <clears throat> so make sure um, this this is just for people that are joining in the future. Because I know some of you, uh, your request was like eight, nine days old. I'm like, wow, okay. I send out emails saying, you know, you need to finish your process. Didn't get any reply, so I delete the request. So if, if you try to click the link now and it doesn't work, you're going to have to create a new invitation. So I have to set some type of standard or else I'll have scroll through pages and pages and pages of invitations trying to manage them. So I'm looking at the best way to approach this. And so that's what we're going to do. So let's get into today's lesson and, and I guess some of us will connect the dots here so I was tested um, years ago to see what I'm allergic to because certain seasons oh my goodness you know watery eyes red eyes stopped up uh, post nasal drip I mean just everything so when they tested me, they found out I was allergic to pollen, dust, mold, ragweed, grass, pine, you name it. Um, you know, those allergens in the air. So, what is an allergy? And I got this from medlineplus.gov slash allergy html if you want to go look an allergy is a reaction by your immune system to something that does not bother most others most other people people who have allergies often are sensitive to more than one thing substances that often create reactions are po uh, pollen dust mites mold spores um yeah, I was allergic to cat, dog hair, all that good stuff. Pet dandruff, foods, um, insect stings, even medications. Now, this is what I thought was in interesting. Normally, your immune system fights germs. It is your body's defense system. In most allergic reactions, however, it is responding to a false alarm. Genetics and environment probably both play a role. So, and of course, when you have allergies, it can cause a variety of symptoms, such as runny nose, sneezing, itching, rash, swelling, asthma. So, it, having allergies is no joke. And... When I woke up this morning, Father put this in my Ruach, and I'm like, okay, this is going to help somebody. Because some of us have spiritual, seasonal allergies, and we haven't figured out why we have them, where they even come from. So we're going to walk this down through some scripture. Now, I want you to notice that usually when you have allergies, some of the main things that are affected, you know, uh, your eyes, your breathing, uh, nasal passages, you know, it, it really can be something. So the Father told us some things in the Torah, and... we still haven't figured out why during certain periods we have such reactions. So I'm going to walk this thing out to hopefully help. Okay, let's look at Numbers 3350. And if you're not following me right now, just hold on. You, you, you'll get where I'm going here real soon. Trust me. And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, 
in the plains of Moab by Jordan of Jordan, by Jericho of Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you pass over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then shall you drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molding images and quit pluck down all their high places. And you shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein. For I have given it, given you the land to possess it. And you shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more you shall give, the more inheritance, and to the fewer you shall give less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth. According to the tribes of your fathers, you shall inherit. But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which you let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes thorns in your side and shall vex you in the land wherein you dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. So, when there are things, okay, and, and this was talking about when they went into, into uh, Canaan. To get their inheritance. And it became Israel. They were supposed to drive out. They were supposed to destroy the pictures. Destroy the molten images. Tear down the high places. They were supposed to do all these things. And the source for those things. Were the people. And. A lot of us. Have not figured out yet. That people can be an allergent for us okay because of what they bring okay because the Torah should be the basis but people bring when when you hang around people they bring allergens and their allergens can come through their feelings, their emotions, their thoughts, you know, and those things can affect the word of Elohim in you and cause you to get runny eyes, to have problems breathing, to have your nose runny. And I want you to notice, and, and I'm just going to stay right here for a second, that these symptoms start to act up when you hang around certain people. You haven't figured out yet that the person becomes an allergen in your life. It causes a immune system response in you and you wonder why you feel why am I feeling like this well who you been hanging around why am I thinking like well who you been talking to we've got to figure this thing out because this thing can be life or death some allergens like food people with food allergies can be a life or death situation okay let's look here at Joshua and, and these allergens that I'm talking about I know earlier I talked about pollen pet dandruff 
mold, spores, um, grass, you know, just, just all ragweed, um, dust mites. But the allergen I'm talking about is people. People that have not lined up with Torah. And if you are trying to line up with Torah, they can become an allergen to you. Okay, now let's look at Joshua, Yahushua 23, 11. Take good heed therefore unto yourself that you love Yahuwah your Elohim. Else, if you do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations. See, some people still have the ways of the world or the ways of their religious movement, whether it be Christianity or whatever, in them. And their doctrines are based on that. And if you're trying to move forward in Torah, this thing can become an allergen to you. Because they won't let go. Now the question is, will you let go? Because I want you to think. Think long and hard. When do these things act up? They only act up when you get around them. Long as I'm, long as I'm not around the, you know, the allergens, the pets, you know, pet dandruff, cats, um, the pollen, you know, the grass. If I'm just, and, and I'm going to throw this word in there, I set myself apart from those things. Remember who is set apart? Didn't Yahuwah said, I am set apart? Be you also set apart? But we want to hang around everything and think we can be normal. But I can look at your eyes and see your eyes are red and teary, always sniffling, always coughing. The, the symptoms are there. And what we tend to do is treat the symptoms instead of removing the source. If you remove the source, the symptoms will go too. Okay, but let me keep reading. Even, okay, even these that remain among you shall make marriages with them and go in unto them and they to you. No of a surety that Yahuwah Elohim will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. Now, let me tell, we, we can have people that are in the walk, but they still got a nation mentality. Isn't that what they had in the wilderness? They get, came out of Egypt but Egypt was still in them. So having a nation mentality can still even exist among us. Based on how we do judgment, how we are receptive to his commandments, his statutes, his Torah. You know, even some of our people will... Put man's law, judicial law, above the father's law. And you know it happens. But they shall be a snare and a trap unto you. And scourges in your side, thorns in your eyes. Until you perish from off this good land which Yahuwah Elohim has given you. This is serious business because you would not think someone claiming to be in this walk would have a nation mentality. 
That's why we talk about fruit so much, bearing good fruit, because you'll know them by the fruit they bear. All you got to do is just watch, and you'll see the fruit. It'll come. Okay, look here, we, and we're talking about allergies, because for those of us that are striving to do what's right, this can be a huge hindrance. Have, have, have any of you ever had a sinus headache from your allergens? Oh man, I've had one. That thing will make you feel like you want to chop your head off. It's no joke. This is, this is the same thing that can happen to us spiritually. When we hang around people that are allergens. Okay, and this this is something we really got to consider because remember it talks about in Amos 3 and 3 how can two walk together except they will be in agreement what fellowship has light with darkness we've got to see this we've got to realign our life and, and stop treating the symptoms stop praying for about the symptoms let's get on removing the allergen because the father told them that if they didn't these things would become pricks in their eyes thorns in their side it would plague them and look at how the nations Look at the history of Israel, how the nations plagued them when they did not eliminate who they were supposed to. Okay, so let's read here in Judges 2 verse 1. And a messenger of Yahuwah came up from Gilgal to Bo Bochum and said, I made you to go. Now, listen now. I want you to just listen because this could help you uh, in another way too. Because who says this? The messenger or it was saying the King James, the, the angel of Yahuwah. Okay. I made you to go up out of Egypt and and have brought you into the land which I swore unto your fathers. Mm. Now, this is the messenger saying this. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you and you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. You shall throw down their altars but you sh have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Wherefore, I say also, wherefore, I also said, I will dr not drive out, excuse me, not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your side, and their mighty ones, or gods, shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass when the messenger of Yahuwah spake these words unto the children of Israel that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of the place Bochum. And they sacrificed there unto Yahuwah. So you've got to see it for what it's worth. Now let's go to Proverbs. Thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. That's Proverbs 22, 5. So notice, it's talking about a person are in the ways of the forward. He that keeps his soul shall be far from there. That's where that set apart comes in. 
and who's been I mean sometimes it's difficult for us to make the decision but if you want to keep suffering that's up to you I'm telling you if you make the decision and stick by it oh man you'll feel a, a lot better a lot better now I like Isaiah 5 verse 1 I, and I put this whole thing in there because I, I think it's a it's a very good narrative and we read it before but we're just looking at it from a little different perspective now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard my well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruit in a very very a uh, very fruitful hill and he fenced it gathered out the stones thereof planted it with the choices of vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein and he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes and now O inhabitants of Jerusalem or Jerusalem and men of Judah, Yehuda, judge, I pray you, between between me and my vineyard, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes now go to it i will tell you what i will do to my vineyard i will take away the hedge thereof and it shall be eaten up and break down the wall thereof and it shall be trodden down and i will lay it waste it shall be it shall not be pruned nor d digged but shall come up briars and thorns and I will also command the cloud that they rain no rain upon it for the vineyard of Yahuwah of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Yehuda or Judah his pleasant plant he looked for a judgment but behold oppression and for righteousness but behold a cry so, there, when, when you're set apart, you have to put up barriers. Now, does that mean you just put yourself in an isolated place? You know, you can't go to the grocery store or check out. No, that, that's not what we're getting at. We're talking about who you keep company with, who you take counsel with, who you take advice from, who you fellowship with, who you love to talk to. That's what we got to evaluate. Jeremiah 4, 3. For thus saith Yahuwah to the men of Yehuda and Jerusalem, or Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among the thorns. Now, when we get over to the Brit Hadashah in the New Testament, we're going we're gonna to see these thorns or these things that I'm typing as allergens because they really stick you. They stick you hard. They have certain concerns. And they always keep something stirred up. They always causing a reaction. Disturbing peace. I don't know if you ever ran into a thorn or briars or thistles. They are a nuisance. Ezekiel 2 verse 6. And thou son of man be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words. Their briars and thorns be with thee. 
and thou dost we and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Now, the reason I'm talking about this, okay? He addresses not only the person, but the person's words. Okay, some some people do not want to be under leadership. Don't don't want nobody to lead them. They think they can lead themselves. Well and good, have at it. And the words that are spoken, you get around a person, you listen to them long enough, you'll see where their heart is. But you know, it even talks about let every soul be subject to the higher power. There are people that are watching for your soul. That Elohim has placed during this time. To make sure you get to where you want to go. When I say want to go, I'm talking about in the kingdom. But what often happens, people want to go outside of what's being told to them because they want a different result. They don't want to listen, hard-headed. It's like a child. You're trying to tell your child, don't touch the stove. It's hot. But they can't, they got to find out for themselves and touch it when you already told them. Now, some children will listen to you, and some won't. So, my question is starting this day, are you willing to examine your life? And the things that you know and see are causing re allergic reaction in your life. Are you willing to start to remove those things? You can use nasal spray. You can take medication. You can do all. But the the fastest relief is to get from around it. Stop eating it. Stop being around it. I tell you what, if I could get from around this pollen, man, I'd be all right. But see, I can't control the pollen, but I can control who I associate with. Who I spend my time with. Like I said before. We have people even among us. Still have a nation mentality. And they would try to circumvent. The word of Elohim any way they can. Hope that's not you. But it does happen. Matthew chapter 7 verse 16 You shall know them by their fruit Do men gather grapes of thorns or thist or figs of thistles Of course they don't Now here's what I want you to see And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them so let's go to verse 22 of Matthew, the 13th chapter, and see. What was these thorns? And he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. The cares of this world. Mm, the deceitfulness, deceitfulness of riches. Choke the word, and he becomes uh, he becometh unfruitful. 
So can you see that these thorns is sown among thorns? So he hears the word, the cares of the world. So where are they getting their idea of what's important? Usually that comes through other people. You know who you associate with and these things choke the word out of them makes them unfruitful so the best way is to get yourself from among the thorns So, I ask you, what type of mentality should someone in Torah have? What, what, what should they do? Heal Israel. We, we say the Shema every week. We're supposed to love you, Yahuwah Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. But a nation mentality, what do they love? What do they value? Do they value the word of Elohim? No, they value their system that they built. Whatever, they, whatever system that is, whether it's, whether it's um, in ancient times, the Egyptian mighty ones that were built or gods that were built and worshiping them, or the system of today. You know, there's no regard for the word of Elohim. Their, their thought doesn't revert back to the word. They're not meditating on the word of Elohim day and night. They're more concerned about what's going on in this world. Not what's going on in the kingdom. So what does it say in John? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world is the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Okay. Friendship with the world is what? Enmity with Elohim. So where is your mindset constantly? Is it on the things of Elohim? Or are you always thinking about things that pertain to this world system? Some people are more worried about their job than the word of Elohim. You know, the mentality is, is off the chain. Some people are more worried about, they, they have a self-centeredness about them. Everything has to evolve around what they want, what they think. Now, I ask you, is that the word of Elohim? I thought everything's supposed to evolve around him. So, we, we've got a choice. Because remember, we've inherited these lies for years. And now we've got to make sure we purge our system of the lie, not of the truth. Because remember, what does the serpent do? The serpent mix, mixes in. The lie with the truth. So some of us are throwing everything out the window. But there was still some truth that was there. That's salvageable. It's principles of truth. Okay, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 7. Lest I should be exalted above uh, measure. Through the abundance of revelation. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. 
Notice what it defines the thorn of the flesh as the messenger of Satan, a Satan to buff me, lest I be exalted above measure. So this whole lesson, Miss Bukai, is just simply designed because I noticed that people change behaviors when they get around certain people. Okay? And when I say change behaviors, I'm not talking about for the good. Or, or you, you get around certain people, you start to feel a certain way. And it's not according to the word of Elohim. Certain subjects and topics when when you're in when you're with one group you agreeing with them but then you go to another group you're totally opposite you disagree so something ain't right <laughs> it's time for some adjustments to be made because we should be constant the word of elohim is unchanging it changes not he doesn't change. His word doesn't change. So if you're saying you got his word, why are you always changing? You know, you if you, you call one person, then the next thing you know, they done gave you their feelings and emotions and thoughts on, on a certain subject, then then now, bam, you done shifted over to something else and it wasn't even based on Torah. It was based on an opinion. Those are allergens that you need to separate yourself from. Because he told us not to lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge him and he will direct our path. An opinion can be an allergen. Now, if, if I'm on a subject, I'll let you know. If I don't have a concrete scripture, I'll, this is my opinion. Because I don't want my opinion to be confused as the word of Elohim. So I'll let you know. This, now, this is just my opinion. If you, if you ask my opinion. But my opinion is not his word. If his, if his word said thou should not kill. That's what it says. I can have an opinion about it. But what does his word say? We've got to be concrete. Now, look at Hebrews 6, verse 1. Therefore, of leaving the principles of the doctrine of Messiah, let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith towards Elohim, of doctrines of immersions or baptisms, of the laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will I do if Elohim permits. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift, which were made partakers of the set-apart spirit and have tasted the good word of Elohim and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the son of Elohim afresh and put him to open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it and bringeth forth herbs meat for them by whom it, dress, it is dressed receiveth, uh, receiveth blessings from Elohim. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. 
and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burnt. Thorns and briars are rejected. So I just want to make sure that you understand you got to watch who you're around. Because it's affecting you. It's affecting your strength. It's affecting your focus. It's throwing you off. And once you grasp that, start to make adjustments. So that you can be strong. The desire is for all of us to have strength in Elohim. Now, before I pray, if you got questions, you can send them to info at mylivingbranch.org. I'll be glad to entertain your questions. I'm just looking back through the chat. Okay. So remember, no one said this journey would be a bed of roses. You're going to be tried. You're going to be tested. The end result of your trying and testing should be, the outcome should be that you love his commandments and you show it. That's what your heart should be producing. As you grow in this walk and you learn different things. And search it out. You should be willing. Once you, once you, once you acknowledge it. Okay. I remember when I first started this journey. Okay. And coming from a Christian background. I was like, you know, hey, all meats are good for food. Everything's good for food. Just pray over it. But when I came to the understanding that Leviticus 11 told us what was food and what was not food, what we could eat and what we couldn't eat, I dropped all my previous thoughts, process, and started following what I learned, what, what was opened up to me. Now, some people, things open up to them, uh, understanding, and they still don't walk in it. But when an understanding comes, it's time for you to walk in it. Okay? And, and that's what my prayer for you is, that you can start walking in the things that Elohim is revealing to you. Oh, yeah, let's see. And if, if we haven't any um, technical difficulties I'll be posting the, the this video up on YouTube so you'll be able to watch it there as I know sometimes live stream does act up now remember next week 
We will not be conducting the lesson on Gregorian Saturday. It will be on Gregorian Sunday. And I will make sure that the um, the thing on the website reflects it so you you know you'll lose and it'll give you notification. This is a part of our adjustment. You know, so I can I'm trying to help us help those that want to um, to walk in this new understanding. And by all means research it. Don't just do it because I say so. Get an understanding. And all you're getting, what's it say? Get an understanding. All right, Father, I'm asking you to help my mispakah. Many of us struggle with people and with things in our lives, things that affect us. Father, help us to be set apart. Help us to wear this world as a loose garment. Help us, Father, to be able to be set apart like you. Not like folks think we should be set apart. Because sometimes their thought process in being set apart is not like yours. Because our thoughts are not like yours. And our ways are not like yours. We want your ways. We want your thoughts. They'll help us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Thank you, Father, for your way of thinking. Thank you, Father, for your way of doing things. I pray, Father, that those that are earnestly seeking you, earnestly desiring, that you would show them, give them understanding. Give them patience, Father, so that when they're learning this process, that they won't get discouraged. Send a spirit of encouragement their way that will keep them motivated to do your will. Now I give you praise, honor, and esteem in the name of Shiach Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so I know uh, a lot of you probably have noticed that um, a lot of people are doing their Passover now. We're here at the end of April. So, if the Father's calendar is fixed, now I'm not talking about fixed on the Gregorian calendar, but his calendar is fixed. And everything occurs the same time every year, according to what you see up in the sky. So, this year, somebody added a 13th month to the calendar that people are following. But there's no scriptural evidence any place that tells us that we're supposed to add a month. So there's a lot of things we have to reconcile. When I start doing these little mini lessons, we'll start to address them. But stand, you, stand, you stay fast, be steadfast, you know, when we started, uh, myself and Maury Lamar started the journey, you know, our, our objective was to find truth. We had no objective to try to prove this one right or prove this one wrong. We wanted the evidence of scripture and the writings that the Father sent us to, to lay this out. And that's what it basically has done. So, you know, don't beat yourself up if you don't grasp it all at once. It's a process. It was a process for us when we started, you know. But as we continued to grow in it, we added more and more understanding to the Father's calendar and to his time clock. So, I just look forward to uh sharing the understanding you know you know I'm not here for debate and all that good stuff if, if you believe there's a different calendar uh then you follow that but I'm just you know my ultimate objection objective is to find truth and I pray that's what your objective is 
All right. So, just give you a snapshot of the calendar here. The next thing, if you missed um, Passover, uh, this is in the U.S. This will be for time zones overseas. Usually, it will fall under the Jerusalem time. But if you miss Passover, the second Passover is here. So our next feast day for us won't be into June 2nd. Uh, feast of Weeks of Shavuot. Okay. Okay, if you're still looking for resources, you can find those resources on the Hebrew Foundation Resource Center. So you can get your Dead Sea Scrolls, all that good stuff right there. Okay, and Hebrew Ten Commandments and the Hebrew Passover story are still available. They're still good year around for teaching your children, sitting down, interacting with them, uh, reading to them. Ask them what they see in the pictures. Good tool. Hebrew Passover story. Okay, and my humble apologies for all of those that had submitted bookmarker requests. Finally got um, the system that I used to take the bookmarker requests was... Uh, was not sending me notifications. I thought it would automatically send send it, but I had to go in there and change the setting. Good news is, uh, thank appreciate appreciate Vic in Ohio who uh, let me know he sent me a um, sent me a, a picture of it and said, you know, hey, I haven't received my bookmarkers, so I went and started researching. I had about, uh, I think I had about five, six requests in there. So I got all those sent out. He got his bookmarkers and so everything is lovely now. <laughs> so um, anyone that submit bookmarker requests now should be good to go. Now, in the coming months, we're going to redesign it. Guess what? Instead of the um, tree there, we're going to put pomegranates on it. We're going to probably change the color to a pomegranate color. So, that should be in the uh, upcoming months. But we'll keep you abreast of that. And if you would like to support us, you can support us through Cash App. That seems to be a favorite. PayPal. Or you can mail in your donation. And we also uh, on the website moving over to digital assets because that is where everything is going. If you haven't figured it out, everything in this world will be tokenized. We're headed towards a cashless society simply because they have to at some point control the buying and the selling like you see in the book of Revelations. All righty, Miss Picasso, seasonal allergies dealing with thorns and thistles. Hope it was a help to you. Hope you're able to do what you need to do to eliminate those allergens out your life. Because I know for me in the natural, coughing, sneezing, uh, sinus headaches and all that stuff is no fun stuff. Especially when it's nice outside and you want to go out and enjoy it. So if you want to enjoy this walk, it's time to eliminate some of them allergens. Alrighty, so if you need anything, Mr. Bacar, email me at info at mylivingbranch.org. Uh, if you haven't joined the website, join it. And remember, your fruit matters here at My Living Branch. Alright, Mr. Bacar, don't forget to tune in to Moray, uh my Yahoo and the Path to Yahuwah and our joint service with Living Branch. It'll be at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Look forward to seeing you over there.